What's up there, it's Derek Rugan here, and welcome back to another Lurps Raw video. No, I haven't made one in a long time because I've been a lazy ass and decided to make a video that still doesn't make sense in many cases of this game, but I just decided to do it because I was out of ideas, and there's a lot of things that doesn't make really much sense in this game. So I thought it would be fun, and that's really it, just pointing out the details and features that doesn't really make sense in the real world, and we'll see how this goes. Number 10 is the Chili Pepper. The Chili Pepper protecting you from fire damage makes no sense. I mean, last I checked on Wikipedia, they clearly state that if you continue to eat a lot of Chili Peppers or just heat things, you will become more and more used to heat and it wouldn't hurt so badly. But that doesn't make sense when your entire body is constantly getting on fire and you will be like, oh, that feels so good, which makes no sense because it only affects your mouth. Number nine is the Tangler's Tongue going through walls. Now, this is basically done if, as of course, you're a Tangler, and you jump, and you basically ting, or just use your ability on someone, and then you quickly fall down, and your tongue actually gets them, and you become to capture them. Now, this more or less looks like your tongue is very sharp, and it's going through the walls, which looks super, I guess... Uh, unnerving, really. But more or less, it's just, it's just game mechanics, and it's never meant to be like that. But... It would have been kind of a little bit nicer if it just went around or like on top of the walls or something like that. But instead it just goes straight through them like it's actually super deadly. It goes through any, any structure. Into the number 8 spot is the Banshee's first stage. Now this doesn't make sense at all because first of all, if you were a zombie and there was literally a human a few inches or probably even a feet away from you, you would want to attack them and eat them alive. But instead the Banshee is just standing there walking around crying instead of eating them alive and if you were a zombie you don't eat them and if they were a zombie they would want to eat you which doesn't make sense at all because they're a zombie their objective is to kill you and eat you coming into number seven is the lab container in death canyon now this one the top of the container the one that's broken isn't connected to the back of the wall or the ceiling so it's just floating there now if you do take a look at the back of it it kind of does look like it is connected but it isn't and it more or less if it was connected to the wall it would not support it and more or less it would just fall down in a second hand. but it's just floating there so there's that Coming into the number 6 spot is the ammo station. Now, in real life, look at all those magazines and ammunition there. They would not support 20 magazines in total. Because if you take a look, there's only like 4 magazines and a few bullets on there. So that doesn't mean that is infinite ammunition. Yes, there are several ammo stations on the map. But if you continue to go to the only one constantly, how is there so much ammo? Where is all this ammo coming from? Is there a cabinet or something? Coming into the number 6 spot is the Inferno being in the water. Now, on the map flooded, the Inferno doesn't get damaged or even dies to the water on this map. Even in his ability form, he doesn't die. And also his fire goes underwater, so there's that. That doesn't make any sense, because last I checked, um, basically a fire extinguisher and water, and probably something else I'm forgetting, are one of the most best solutions to actually kill fire. Now, while we're still talking on the Inferno thing, let's talk about how his fire thing doesn't... If he, fi if he gets you on fire and you go in the water, it doesn't even affect you either way, so you just continue to burn. While we're still talking about the Inferno, let's talk about how his ability doesn't affect anything in the environment apart from the survivor. If you would expect the house, trees, grass, or anything like that to come down burning, it would not. And you would instead look like an idiot who's trying to burn the entire, I don't know, town down. And if you say, hey, let's burn down the house while the survivor's in there to kill them instantly, it doesn't work like that. You have to go in there and get yourself killed. Coming into the number three spot is the spitter's spit not doing enough to kill the survivor. I mean, if you were to see acid, you would obviously assume that it would burn your skin off and probably even melt your entire body into crisp. And instead, it just basically scratches you or just, I guess, hurts like fire. And instead of just burning alive or just melting or something like that, you're just, ow, oh, that actually hurt. Oh, it's not too bad. And instead, even, how does I see this? Even when the spit is even hitting on any certain objects like metal 
or probably even steal or something like you would expect them to burn as well and even leave like a hole into wherever they're supposed to be but instead it just melts away or just dries away and instead it just doesn't do anything into the environment as well especially to the survivor when you expect them to melt at any second as soon as they step in it instead it just hurts them coming into the number two spot is the juggernaut's rock constantly being a rock and not a block of sand, dirt, uh, metal, steel. This doesn't make sense at all. Because if you're standing on top of something that isn't uh, stone or rock, you would basically still pick up a, 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 a basically a stone. And that doesn't make any sense. Because why would you pick up a boulder if you were on top of metal or grass? Now, we're finally made it to number one. This doesn't make sense because the Juggernaut's rock throw doesn't kill the survivor like in real life, but instead it just hurts them a tiny bit. Now, there is an argument made to be here being like, come on, the rock isn't that that deadly. But if you were in real life wearing no armor and some giant humanoid thing threw a boulder at you, you would have your rib cage utterly destroyed, all of your bones in your body destroyed, and possibly even die from that first throw, or most likely die from it. But instead, the survivor's just like, ow, actually, that hurt a lot. Don't worry, I got a medkit. It's completely fine. Like, your bones are regenerating at any second. I mean, yeah, there is armor, but most of the time, no. 